Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very senior and accomplished professional from London, UK, Helen Hopper. Helen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. Helen is a leadership development specialist. She's an author, and all of you know I'm very partial to authors. She's an author of a book titled The Art and Psychology of Board Relationships, The Secret Life of Boards, and she's an entrepreneur and a mental health activist. So Helen, before we talk about leadership and your book, tell me about your own amazing journey. Ah, well, um, I started, I actually started in a kind of um, working class area of, uh, of the UK, um, and uh, a teacher at school um, yeah. helped me out and uh, suggested that I apply to Oxford, which would never have occurred to me. And her husband cheated me for free and I got a place and it changed my yeah. life and mm. um, that access to education and a whole different world. Mm. Um, and I, I love my time there. Um, and when I came out, I uh, I went into my degree was mostly in philosophy, which isn't that useful in the working world, although I think it has turned out to be pretty useful. Mm. Um, I went into management consulting with uh, Accenture and was doing large scale systems transformation. I was COBOL programming back in the days when uh, computers yes. were steam powered. Uh, and what I noticed there at an early point in my career was actually the technical side of things is pretty straightforward. Computers do what you ask them to do until you tell them to do something else or unplug them. Uh, and the the difficult and also for me the really interesting and exciting part was people mm. and how they gather around things how they do things together where that can go wrong mm. um, and how people can get back to doing things collaboratively mm. how they can grow and develop so I got into that side of things um, started uh, some work with an occupational psychology company where I learned a lot about the nuts and bolts of people assessment and development um, and just took my consulting in that direction, had a sort of a, an early-ish midlife crisis and went to uh, live and work in the Caribbean for a few years, wow. which was really interesting mm -hmm. um, just to live and work in another culture, I think was massively developmental for mm -hmm. me and I worked in the States a bit. Um, and then uh, fast forwarding a bit, I co-founded H Cubed, which is a leadership development consultancy uh, we're a collaborative, a peer collaborative, like a collective of people mm. that love that kind of work uh, about 13 or 14 years ago. And uh, we do leadership development uh, work there. So it's been a, a sort of uh, a journey from the technical to the psychological and the people and the, and the human. How wonderful. How wonderful. So let's talk about leadership, team development and strategic change. My first question to you, Helen, is what are some of the core qualities of effective leadership? that you have identified through your own coaching experience? Mm. Um, I mean, there are many, many um, leadership development uh, models. And um, I think over the years, uh, you know, we've, we've worked with, uh, with many of them. Uh, I, I love Stephen Covey, actually. Yeah. Uh, if you love books, I'm sure you'll, you'll love his book. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of leadership is about habits um, and I guess in your world of personal brand, I think it's um, about really understanding who you are mm. um, and what that means for the work you want to do and how you want to do it and then how you want to be with others. Mm. And, and that gives you a sort of a, a platform, a foundation, a brand, I guess. Um, and and then it's very much about um, discovering, uh, practicing, strengthening habits um, that enable that brand of leadership that that you really value and you think is important mm. um, to uh, to to come to life through mm. others. And mm. um, so I talked about um, our business being a collaborative hub. We're we're very much about collaboration and learning. We mm. love it. So. We have a lot of habits, um, leadership habits, to do with getting together and really drilling into what each other have discovered, what's mm. interesting us, problems mm. that we'd like to get our heads around, areas we'd like to explore. Um, and so habits of curiosity and uh, learning together. Mm. Um, so 
those to me are examples of of habits and their leadership habits and and you um i think it's important to develop your own and it's a con it's a lifelong journey i think mm. um to develop your own set of habits um that enable others to see who you are um to come alongside and then enable you to get the best from them mm. as they develop their own habits as well right, right. Uh, so said. i think it's an iterative process mm. well said and what in your view are some of the common barriers to effective collaboration or team collaboration i i i I do think um, the fundamental barrier, and this came out very much in our research. We we did um, for a couple of years of research before we started writing the book with board members who were, I mean, a particular mm. sort of team. And uh, we looked for lots and lots of themes and then we reduced them down and we ended up kind of with one. And we're like, oh yeah, this is it. Mm. Um, it's defensiveness and fear quite often mm. um, and that you know comes in all sorts of flavors we've all got our own variety of it you know will my idea be good enough mm. uh, can I say it to these people uh, or perhaps I feel like I have to have the answer or if I disagree with someone I have to tell them how they're wrong mm. there's lots of defensive reactions that can make us hold back or push too hard um, and, and make it hard for a group to get to, I guess, what um, people talk about now is psychological safety, mm. a really inclusive, um, experimental uh, place where people can throw themselves and their ideas in. You can build on it. You can collectively have a go at things, mm. and you, can, you know, transform as you go. So I think it's just personal fears, anxieties, which we all, all have, right? Um, and those get activated in groups. Um, and once that's started, you can get into a, a negative cycle mm. um, that people find it hard to get out of. It's, right. it's surprising. Even very senior groups of very experienced people, you can find them stuck in a very sort of, um, in our book, we talked about, um, you know, the, a standoff situation where they're just having an argument about something. Mm rather than collectively trying to get to a, a best position. Mm. Uh, and I think it comes down to defensiveness and that is personal fear. Well, said. Life, really. well said, well said. And uh, what role in your view does empathy play in leadership, especially when implementing strategic change? Yeah, I, um, I think it's absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, well, back to the, uh, the the Stella, Stephen Covey would say, seek first to understand. Um, so I think uh, we, and feel um, that to uh, enable change with a group of people, mm -hmm. uh, we've each got to understand a starting point for others. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to understand for a whole range of different people, uh, what might be exciting for them what would make them think yeah I, i'll give that a go mm -hmm. uh, what would make it worthwhile um we've also got to think you know what what might be at stake what might someone feel like they're losing what mm -hmm. might that loss be like and sometimes they're things that in the scheme of things seem quite small but for mm -hmm. an individual can be massive right um, and so i think empathy really helps us um, understand each other's hopes and fears, I guess, mm. and care about them a bit, and 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 create a change where people get um, largely uh, things, or, or often can get quite mm. a lot of what they want. Right. Um, fears can get managed, and also you can accept that it's, change isn't always good, and there'll be elements that might be painful or difficult, or you might lose, you might have to sacrifice something. Mm. But if you can under, if other people have understood. That that is a sacrifice for you and respected that it feels easier to let it go mm -hmm. so great yeah response. i think it enables that process yeah. great response thank you my next question is how do you help leaders cultivate a culture of innovation and creativity um yeah i i i feel um that it comes back i'm going to sound like a broken record on this because i, I think do you think it comes back to Helping people lower their defences mm. um, and feel comfortable, feel safe, mm. um, feel psychologically safe. Mm. Um, and, and once you're in that place, it becomes much easier to, well, actually your brain is much, you know, talking about the neuroscience, mm. 
brain is just much more able to make connections and have ideas if you feel relaxed safe playful even mm -hmm. you know you can and you can suggest things and it clicks another idea that that generative place i think comes from security and mm -hmm. safety in a group so i really like the work of um timothy clark on well amy edmondson on psychological safety and then timothy clark on levels of um psychological safety i don't mm. know if you've if you've seen that where you know inclusion safety um is that you're uh you're you know you're part of this group and and you you belong in it and i mm. think that's a core fundamental right. and then the next the next level being learning where I can say, I don't know, I can ask you questions. I can, uh, you know, be ignorant and let, ready to change uh, my knowledge or my view. And then it's into contributor where I can actually put my own ideas and my mm. own stuff and my left field idea. And I don't feel like I'm going to be, you know, um, humiliated or excluded or or criticized actually mm -hmm. dismissed mm -hmm. and then the top level and this is where i see really innovative teams is challenger safety where mm -hmm. there's it's you know it's not um it's not the sort of brutal bullying kind of stuff but it's real knockabout yes yeah Correct. not that bit but, but you've got something here now what mm -hmm. can we do with that it's a real to and fro um that builds on on each other's ideas and it's a place of trust and mm -hmm. safety mm -hmm. well said can you also talk a little bit about your one of your strategies or methodologies for developing emotional intelligence in the leaders? Yeah, um, I, it's a it's a it's a really uh, to me important question, um, and there's one part of it that I've specialised in um, over the years. So we know that emotional intelligence is um, self awareness. Um, and there are lots of uh, things we can do with that, you know, uh, getting feedback, psychometrics, um, uh, reflection, reflective exercises, and then um, really understanding the other person, I think is a really vital part of it as well. And then looking at what's going on between you. And the part I've really focused on is, is understanding other people. Mm -hmm. And you could call it a strategy or a technique, or you could very simply, you know, my grandma would have called it listening mm -hmm. um, with, uh, you know, compassionate curiosity and yeah. genuine curiosity mm. of wanting to know. So I think I can't help but feel um for you and your situation and understand it if i ask genuine questions and you feel mm. able to start telling me about yourself mm. that's to me how empathy grows and connection grows between people mm. um so i do a fair amount of work um with executives on listening which sounds like you know a, a fairly basic um skill but um i think it's one there isn't much room for in the world um you know there's a lot of uh transmit there's a lot coming at us mm. and i think we're rewarded for that um and we're also rewarded for giving people solutions and answers and jumping to where do we get to um what is less what there's less space for and less less obvious reward is opening up time space um to really explore to really listen to Correct. other people and mm. um, the power of it i don't think we can underestimate it so one of my other hats um so i as you say I'm a, i work in the mental health space yeah. um i had a uh, so i'm a trustee of a mental health charity and i volunteer i spent uh, 18 months of, as um coo of the listening place which is a mm -hmm. london based charity we do face to face support for suicidal people in london mm. um, and we train uh, volunteers everyday people like you and me um, to listen uh, with compassionate curiosity to people that are feeling like life's no longer worth living. Mm, um, mm. So we're not doing therapy. We're not doing, um, you know, we're not doing anything clever in terms of a process. Um, but we've recently five years into that and, and we'll have seen, I don't know, we'll have had uh, 15,000 referrals, something like that. Mm. And we've analysed all the data is that just listening um, has a, a clinically uh, statistically significant highly significant effect on suicidal thoughts and feelings levels mm. of distress so it's a powerful thing that we do yeah um and in that that's an extreme situation um but it has a, just a, a transformative effect on people mm. and in the workplace um we bring some of those uh, some of those skills over 
uh, and we encourage executives to you know to to ask questions and then mm. really listen mm. and then ask another question what else what more oh mm. can you tell me about that can you explain mm. how you felt in that situation can you describe what it was like when you arrived in that that right. new place mm. or really hit that crunch time what what was going on for you there mm. and to really really listen to hold silence um and to put aside our, you know, the natural thoughts that come in of I've got an answer or what you should do is this or I've had just that situation because you probably haven't. You know, you haven't Correct. got the answer. Yeah. The other person is a bright human. If it was simple, you know, they'd have an answer and you can't get it within 10 mm. minutes of listening to them. Mm. Um, and you probably haven't been in the same situation because every situation is unique. So Correct. to really encourage people to put all of those skills that can be quite useful in other parts mm. of business. Mm, well said. Um, yeah, to well put those said. to one side and really listen. Mm, well said. So one more question relating to leadership, and then I want to move to your book. Um, Helen, can you share a transformative moment you have witnessed where listening truly changed a leadership outcome? Yes. Um, so I was, this was some some years ago, and I'll pick an example from a while back because it kind of came full circle. Um, I was working with the managing partner of a law firm mm -hmm. uh, and he'd just uh, been voted into that position by the partnership. Mm -hmm. He was the youngest managing partner the firm had ever had. Um, and he was full of ideas and vision um, for transformative change. Mm -hmm. And he had been elected on that platform. And so he came in and uh, started to work around the firm explaining what it was you know how to get going what to mm. do getting it started and about a year in he was kind of stuck he was you know he had the ideas um but actually getting started with change everyone was sort of nodding politely to him mm. but he couldn't really get that coalition of 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 um, momentum and mm. you know people really behind doing practical things that would start it right um and so we worked together on um, strategic influencing by listening. Mm -hmm. um, so he was coming in with the answers and he thought because he'd been voted in on this platform, they were the right answers. But in reality, there was a process to do to go around um, key people within the partnership um, and to do a larger scale exercise of really understanding the sorts of things we were talking about before, you know, what's at stake for people, what are they excited mm. about, what would make them want to do something different, you know, right. what would get them over that resistance, to really build that coalition by, you know, I mean, his his kind of, um, his his motto to himself was shut up and listen, um, mm. because he's great, he's a great showman, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what he needed to do in this situation mm. was dial that down and just uh, just listen to what was going on and uh, about uh, and he it made a big difference I mean what he the change that they did make in the end was transformative and it wasn't mm. a million miles from what he proposed in the first place mm. people were along with him um, and about 10 years on I was doing in the same firm a leadership um, development uh, program with uh, new partners there and he came along to talk to them and he told this story okay. um, about shut up and listen you know mm. you think you've got the answers maybe you have so, maybe you haven't um, it doesn't really matter mm. uh, just listening will Absolutely. really build something important for you what an amazing example and you're so right most people don't listen in fact they're already formulating their response as someone else is talking Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We call that um reloading. Yes. You know, I'm just, I'm just putting the bullets in the gun. I'm ready to fire them back at you. And Absolutely. I'm trying to put them in my head so I don't forget them. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, Helen, I want to now move to your book, The Art and Psychology of Board Relationships, The Secret Life of Boards. My first question is, what are some common challenges you have observed in board relationships? And how can some of these be addressed? Yeah, as we 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 did, um, as I say, we did research with fifty board members and some, mostly very large um, global organisations, but also some tiny ones. Found very common themes across all of them, and mm. we identified seven patterns um, of relationship dynamics that can be difficult. Mm. Um, the the first 
thinking about boards, one of the tricky things is that no one's in charge because mm. I think humans are quite wired to in hierarchies and feel quite comfortable mm. when they know who's in charge and who the boss is. And on a board, actually, nobody's in charge. Um, so one of them is the exec, non-exec seesaw, where there's a sort of an uneasy balance of power sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so are the uh, are the non-executives sort of marauding into uh, executive areas and overreaching um or are, you know are the are the executives um not revealing things to the non-exec so that they right. can give them support and challenge mm -hmm. because uh you know they want to keep power and control basically by mm. uh, continuing with their own agenda so there's that sort of managing power yeah uh, we've come across well, the other thing um, that came across most commonly is standoffs um where uh, there is a sort of fundamental disagreement uh, and a, a rift, if you like, and for some reason it doesn't get resolved and people get polarised on either side of it mm. and things get a bit more extreme. Mm. And then most conversations and decisions seem to end in a replay of that that underlying dilemma, mm. we would mm. call it. Mm. And uh, it's something psychological in people that we quite like to split into mm. yes, no, right, wrong this or that mm. and when you get one of those polarity splits it can be really hard and the longer it goes on uh, the harder it gets yeah on boards yeah on, uh, on boards, hmm. we often we also found um boards can get out of touch uh we thought that some some boards are sort of in an ivory tower and uh you know can can really lose touch either with the organization or the markets or just the sort of what's yeah. acceptable mm. in the world the global zeitgeist i guess uh in markets um yeah um bullying uh did come up mm. um sadly um and i think it's still pretty prevalent um in some boardrooms um doomsday scenarios when things start to look you know, perhaps you're looking ahead and your cash isn't coming in mm. and you see or you've got had a major PR hit, you know, with something that's potentially mm. uh, threatened the future of the organisation. People tend to, you sometimes see the worst uh, in people. You sometimes see the best in them. Mm. Um, it's extreme and it can be unpredictable. Mm. Um, my uh, One of my business partners, Shauna, says that uh, people are like tea bags. You, you, you don't know how strong they are. Uh, till you put them in hot water <laughs> and so mm. you you know we saw a lot of those um, difficult dynamics but the underlying one that seemed to be present in most boards most of the time was this difficulty with harnessing diversity mm. so you're trying to get a group together that's as diverse as possible because that will give you the best range of perspectives mm. and when you do then it's can be really hard mm. to listen to each other, to understand each other, to come to group decisions, um, to feel comfortable, uh, yeah. and not get into these dynamics. Mm. Mm. So a whole a, a range of different dynamics, um, probably mostly coming back to this defensiveness mm. that we can well feel. Well said. So time for one more question. And uh, my question is, how do you, based on all the research that you've done, envision the future of board governance evolving? Yeah. especially in the context of all the global challenges and opportunities. Yeah. Oh, do you have any easier questions? I don't <laughs> um, I think, I mean, governance, we often think of it as system structure process, and I think that's extremely important. Yeah. Um, I think um, what's, and I think one of the biggest issues is the kind of, um, the amount of information and potential data um, that's out there, which is growing exponentially. And so for non-executives, uh, how, how can they equip themselves mm -hmm. to really uh, get underneath risks, to really get ahead of opportunities? You know, it becomes an increasingly harder task mm -hmm. um, to be well-informed. Um, and uh, I think there's an increasing uh, inequality, uh, information inequality between right. executives and non-executives. Mm. And that becomes really hard. So it's almost a constant process of trying to keep keep ahead. Mm. Um, so I think in terms of structure and process, um, that simplicity is really important right. um, because we can put more and more process in place, but often that adds to complexity. Mm. And so I think for boards, 
Um, a lot of it is about really understanding where to focus and being able to deep dive and to have, and you know, I'm biased, I would say this, when they get together um, to have really high quality informed, open collaborative conversations mm. about the most important thing. Okay. So if your governance can get you to that point, um that's you know i think then you'll probably be ahead of quite a lot of the competition mm. and some of that is is structure and process a lot of that's relationship um because a lot of how we really understand a complex system is navigating through people mm. i mean partly it's data but also it's partly through people um you know what is the um you know, uh, uh, in, in this part of an organisation, you know, what's the sentiment? What's the opportunity? How is morale? Uh, what are people excited about? Um, and some of that we can see from data, but quite a lot of it comes mm. through relationships. So being really well connected, executives into the organisation and then executives and non-executives and really um, buddying up as well. And um, so that that inf information bit, mm. the being well educated, that um, non-executives can bring their perspective to an executive, which probably comes, mm. you know, you've got to spend, we really advocate really simple things like traveling to mm. offsite board meetings together yep. and spending three hours on a train talking about what you're seeing in the market, you know, mm -hmm. invaluable. Yep. You can't really program that in or mandate it. But it, I think it massively gets you ahead in terms of the effectiveness of mm. the conversations that you're going to have and the quality of decisions you're going to take well as well. Yeah, well said. And on that note, Helen, I just want to say thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey. Thank you for speaking to me about so many different aspects of leadership, team development and strategic change. I loved your uh, how much time you spent talking about listening. Such an important quality and such few people seem to have it. Uh, thank you also for speaking to me about your book uh, and about boards. Thank you uh, again and good luck. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're an excellent listener yourself. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.